welcome to All About Animals. I'm Sherry Gratitor. And this is the part of the show generally where we have a guest segment and someone will talk and hopefully in educate people who are watching it with regard to one issue or another. Except that today I decided to take the microphone and the camera all for myself because there's something going on in the woods and your backyards all around you that's terribly sad. We're looking at kidnapping and we're looking at murder and we're looking at kidnapping and murder in the name of love. I've had at least four phone calls in the last week from people who have found infant animals, baby deer, fawns, baby bunnies, and a couple of times baby birds. And notice that there were no mother animals around them. Notice that the animals were alone and assumed with the best of good intentions and love in their hearts that these animals had been abandoned by their parents. And so they took them in and they called and they said, I have a bunny, I found it alone in a nest, can you help me? Or there's a fawn, it's been laying in the woods all alone, I've watched it all day and I've not seen a mother come anywhere near it. So obviously it has no mother and they've taken it away. And in effect, what those wonderful, kindly, well-meaning people have done is kidnapped a baby from its mom and oftentimes killed it because many baby animals are terribly hard to raise. So I decided this is the right time of year to talk a little bit about the animals around us, the way they live, and what we can do to help them. And mostly what we can do to help them is simply leave them alone. Um, mother deer, mother bunnies, mother squirrels, mother raccoons generally stay away from their babies almost all day. They will come back for very brief periods to feed and then they'll leave the animals alone and there's a reason for that. Baby bunnies, for example, have no body odor. They do not attract predators. Mama smells like a bunny. Baby fawns have no body odor. A predator wandering through the woods is not going to find a fawn that's been hidden in the bushes by its mother where it could easily scent and track a grown deer who has a very strong body scent. So what these moms do is they find what they consider a safe place. They place their animals in what they consider a safe place and they take themselves away from their babies coming back to make sure that they're fed. Well-meaning, wonderful, kindly people come upon these animals in the woods, in their lawns, in a corner of a backyard, and assume because there's no mama there that the animals are abandoned. Baby bunnies, for example, are among the hardest of baby animals to bottle feed. And unless you're a licensed rehabber and you've had training and you know what you're doing, very frankly, you're not going to be able to keep them alive. The same is true of squirrels. And I get calls fairly regularly about baby squirrels. So here's what you need to know about the animals that live around us. If you see a fawn in the woods under a bush, if you see a nest of baby bunnies, even if it's in the middle of your yard, and mother rabbits are not the smartest animals in the world, folks. They'll literally make a nest in the middle of somebody's yard. You go to mow your lawn and in the middle of it, you'll suddenly see a bunch of fur that seems to be moving. And if you look at it, there will be baby rabbits in there. Um, not the smartest thing in the world to do, but then again, they're rabbits. So if you see baby animals of any kind and the mother's not around, assume that they're well taken care of. If you really have a concern, check on them without touching them, without going near them, a couple of times, if you hear an animal crying, if you hear a fawn and that fawn is crying, if you see rabbits, and yes, baby rabbits do cry when they're hungry, but if you see them and they're crying and you go back a couple of times and they're crying, the chances are that something has then happened to mama. And at that point, what you need to do is you need to find a licensed animal rehabilitator, contact one. If you don't know how to find one, um, animal shelters keep lists of wildlife rehabilitators 
Many municipalities, police departments have lists. Certainly, I know that Save the Pet has a list because I've availed myself of that list many times. Some wildlife relocators and rehabilitators, um, commercial companies will have lists of licensed rehabbers. And then you contact the appropriate one, and there will be the one that does rabbits and one that does migratory wild, wild, oh boy, wildfowl, and one that does birds. And if you contact the appropriate person, you will get straight information as to how you can help, if you should help, if you should interfere. Uh, again, nine times out of ten, 29 times out of 30, those animals have not been abandoned. And by taking them, you're literally kidnapping them from their mothers. And take it one step further and talk about birds. People think that if they find a bird that's fallen out of its nest and they touch it, the mother will reject it. Birds have no sense of smell. They don't know whether you've touched them or not. Now, there are two ways we see birds on the ground. We see fledged birds, birds that have feathers, and we see birds that are not yet fledged. Those are the naked little guys with some pin feathers sticking out here and there. If a bird is not yet fledged, it should not be out of its nest. And then if you look around and you can find the nest, and generally it's going to be right above where you find the baby bird, if you can get on a ladder and take that baby bird and put it back in its nest, Mama will continue to care for it as if it had never left. left. She does not care that you've touched it. She will keep taking care of it. The other thing that we see a lot of times are fledglings, birds that do have feathers, uh, short little tails, not yet developed, but, but, they, but they have feathers on them. And, and fledged, fledged birds are pushed out of the nest by their mother, and then they're taught to fly. So they can be on the ground because Mama has put them on the ground so that they'll learn to fly, and the mother bird and the father bird will be taking care of them. Again, if you take that little bird and you pick it up and it can't fly and you feel terrible about it, you put it in a box and you bring it in, mom and daddy bird are out there saying, where did the baby go with mouths full of food, looking for their offspring, and their offspring is gone. So again, in, 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 the, in the sake of loving the animals around us, in the sake of caring for the, the, the animals that inhabit the habitat around our homes, the first rule is hands off. The second rule with birds is if you can find the nest and the baby has no feathers, put it back. And actually, I came at one point upon a nest that was blown out of a tree and the nest was destroyed and the babies were on the ground and mom and dad were all around and I took a small basket, put some grass in it, climbed up in the tree, shoved the basket in the tree, put the babies in it, and mom and dad raised those babies in that basket and took very good care of them there. So. Mother birds will not desert or abandon baby birds just because you've touched them. There are, there are so many beautiful things in our woods, so many animals, and not just in our woods. If you live in a city, you see deer now in, in the municipalities, and God knows we've seen a cougar. We've seen all kinds of things in our municipalities, and we live with them. They live with us. We share the earth with them, and we have to respect them. We have to respect the natural order. Um, throw in one last thing that, that, that has been of great concern, and I've heard an awful lot of talk about lately, which is cougars. Not cougars. Let's go. Cougars we haven't seen that many of. Let's talk about coyotes. Coyotes will take any furred animal that is small enough. They don't differentiate between a dog, a cat, a wild bunny, a squirrel, or a chipmunk. So if you live in a place where there are coyotes, and very frankly, there are very few places within the sound of my voice where they're not present, it is unsafe to put...